Hey there, I'm Chris Benetti, host of the Smart Author Podcast. In this episode, I speak with Denise Inspired, and we discuss the best things you can do to build your authority and personal brand online. If you're currently stuck with a lack of engagement or a finding that social isn't working, then this episode will be perfect for you as it will give you the steps and tools you need to drastically increase your presence and authority online. Some of the main topics we'll be covering today include how to build a personal brand, what it takes to become truly omnipresent, and how you can become the go-to person in your industry. At the end of this episode, please make sure you visit our website where you can find the show notes plus all the links mentioned with Denise. And if you enjoy this episode, please make sure you subscribe so you're always the first to know when a new episode is released. And of course, if you're struggling with book sales, head over to smartauthormedia.com forward slash audit to get a free audit and a clear plan to get your book sales back on track. Now, let's head over to this fantastic interview. Hey, Smart Authors. Welcome back to another episode. Today, I'm joined by my good friend, Denise Inspired. Denise, how are you? Hi, I am good. I'm good. Can I can I tell people that you struggle with my second name, which is Denise Horan? <laughs> and how we... <laughs> we won't and talk how, about that. <laughs> how we pronounce it. Everybody struggles, but it's Denise Horan. But yes, Horan. Denise Inspired. I'm delighted. To Denise Horan. So yeah, I have it now. I just had to... Got it. You got it. it. Yeah. Um, Denise, would you mind telling everyone about yourself in the next 30 to 60 seconds? Ooh, <laughs> no bother. I am Denise Horn and I help business owners and coaches and authors to create authority online. So what that means is to create like an omnipresence so that they become the go-to within their industry. So what we've learned is like experts know things, but authorities are actually known for things. So there's lots of business owners out there, lots of authors out there that are so good at what they do, but it's a secret. So I help them share that secret and get the confidence and clarity to get out there and shine. <laughs> yeah, it. I love that. And I mean, so today's uh, conversation, I would love to cater towards that because we have a lot of business owners in the audience. We also have a lot of authors um, but be, just being an author, you know, that's like a subject matter expert in, you know, a nutshell, how, like, how do I transition to building a personal brand for myself so that I can become an authority rather than just like this subject matter expert? Well, it's, it's funny, uh, Chris, because most people think that, oh, you know, I need to, you know, I need permission nearly to, to be this expert, but until you realize that you are the expert anyway, and own that, that's when you start to build into it, you know? And it all comes down to visibility. It's, I mm. mean, I meet so many business owners who say, I'm a private person. I don't want to show up online. <laughs> and it's like, that's great. But I mean, there are millions of people out there that are all striving for attention online. And it's huge business. And we know that. And to sell books, if you're, if you're an author and you're, and you're selling books, you have to become a salesperson. You've got to mm. become good at marketing and that all for me what I found is that all comes down to the personal brand so it's like figuring out like the first it starts with clarity it's like okay where am I going what do I want who do I want to reach you really have to delve into who your perfect customer is you know who's going to buy the book who who is your audience and when you delve into that first and you get very clear on your messaging it becomes a lot easier and it's what we call inbound marketing so what we put out people gravitate towards us or, or magnetic marketing you know so yeah. people people get used to us they see our message and go oh, she's talking about me you know when you start to start to talk about the problem you solve so it really is it's it's, it's delving deep into your perfect customers and then starting to work on that visibility which yeah i can go deeper into when which i might in a minute but we will we will yeah so <laughs> i mean all, all of us like listening we, we wrote a book for a specific customer specific avatar and if you didn't you know um <laughs> it might be worth doing a revision of your book but generally speaking we all have an audience we all have a niche we all have a clientele that we want to write this book for um, and so it's really basically looking into that and how we attract those kind of customers in an online space because we've done it in a written format now with the book how do we do that online so 
yeah, I'd love for you to keep going <laughs> down your rabbit hole. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> so basically your book solves a problem or should solve a problem, at least one problem for a business owner or for a parent or for, you know, whatever your niche is. So by delving deep into that book and pulling from it, your content is there already. You know, we always think, oh, I need content. It's so hard. It's not. Your content is created from the contents of your book. You've already mm -hmm. done the hard work. I mean, you have a book for God's sake, you know, like I thought, talk about authority marketing. There are no better ways of showing authority than to be a yeah. published author. So, I mean, you've already done the hard work. So it really is. It's getting the clarity and then the confidence. Confidence is a huge factor because we always think, you know, if I show up online, if I put this photograph up, that girl who I went to school with 40 years ago is going to go, what does she do? What's she doing now? You know, <laughs> or that guy that we know from an old job. Oh, what's he up to now? You know, we always think that people will judge us. Um, and what I always say is we're not that important. And I mean that with love, but we're not. So we think as soon as we post on Facebook or post on Instagram, the whole world's going to see it. You know, you're going to have like, oh, like what if, I, what if I mess up or if the post isn't great or nobody comments? That's OK. It's just it's having the clarity to know that if I start to post, if I start to show up, if I start to be myself, which is a huge thing, be authentic and to drive traffic, to drive people to my book. Well, then by doing this, I know that I'm going to get there and I'm going to sell my books. Mm. So it's knowing that there's an end to this means, you know, it's by, it's knowing that if I put this system in place and I show up continuously for my business, I'll get the book sales. So I will, you know, the business will grow. Um, so it's having that confidence. It's, of course, choosing your platform. It's, of course, showing your face <laughs> and not being afraid. And, you know, like I'm actually shy, which is funny. So when I go to like an... <laughs> Don't be laughing at me. <laughs> but when I go to an in-person event, like I, I have to push myself. And you're laughing, Chris. I met you at, what well, was it? It wasn't 2019, was it? Uh, I, think, I think it might have been, yeah. Uh, no, uh, yes. 2019 was the last one I went to, actually. Yes. So it was the year before. The... 18. Yeah. Yes. Was that right? Anyway. Anyway, we... we uh... <laughs> so I, like, I have to push myself on those occasions to actually... You're still laughing at me. I am shy. <laughs> <laughs> but it takes a lot. I remember, right? So let me just tell you this little personal story. After I had... So I have three babies, three kids. Well, one is 13. She came me for calling her a baby, but I have three kids. And after my third one, I got a bad bout of postnatal depression. So I was struggling in the business. Business was going under all that good stuff that comes with being a mommy <laughs> and trying to run a business and all that kind of stuff. But what happened was um, I had all this hell going on. And I said, right, I need to get back on my feet, get back out there and start, you know. So I started back doing, which my love is video. So I do, I started my to grow my business with Facebook lives. I still do Facebook lives. I do Instagram lives. I love video. I love live video because they can just off the cuff. So I was getting back on my feet after this hell of the post depression and I went to an event and it was my first in-person event here in Dublin. And I went in and I was like a meek little mouse, right? And I was like, oh, you know, I couldn't believe I was here and I was out and I was like putting myself out there again. And I was so nervous. And I thought that everybody in the room would be looking at me going, Oh, she's after losing her business. Did you know her business is doing, you know, really bad? And because she hasn't been well, and you know, I felt like everyone was like, Argh. and again, it's you're not that important. So I went to this event, and this girl came up to me, Chris, and went, oh, Denise Horan, I love your videos. You're so confident. And I burst into tears. <laughs> I was like, oh, because I didn't feel anything like confident. So it's just the reason why I tell this story is because. Oftentimes, you know, you look at someone and go, oh, she's doing amazing or he's doing amazing or he's so confident. You know yourself, Chris, from this make pushing yourself to show up and pushing yourself. And when as an entrepreneur or an author or a business owner, if you can realize, if you can look in the mirror and realize that everybody else is a little bit afraid too. you know, everybody else has those butterflies or those second guessing. And I mean, I might do a reel on Instagram or I might do a live video and I still think, should I say something wrong in that? You know, was that okay? I mean, I'm obviously not as bad now because I'm like, oh, whatever, don't care. Just put the content out there. I've done stuff, you know, I don't overthink it as much. But in the early days, especially when you start to show up, you overthink every little thing you say. Yeah. But what's key, 
have what I found for business owners is that when you realize that everybody else does as well and you start to care less, you know, um, there's obviously things you steer clear of, which I always steer clear. You know, I keep away from the controversial stuff. I keep away from religion and politics. And, you know, I leave with positivity, everything's as positive as I can be. And I just lean into that and show up as my authentic self, who I am, a mommy, a little bit scatty sometimes, you know, um, just building my business and teaching other business owners to do the same. Yeah. Does that sure. make sense? <laughs> so with the like being out there like that, what what do you what do you think is the best cadence for business owners? Or do you think it's like a bit of trial and error, what works for you, your audience? Like how would you determine what the best way for you to be a publisher on social media? So everyone's audience is different, okay? But there are some key points to remember. So like First of all, the key big question that on everyone's lips, uh, lips is, what platform should I be on? You know, I'm an author. Should it be Instagram? Should it be LinkedIn? Should it be Facebook? And uh, most, uh, you know, experts in social media will say, oh, you know, you're in health and wellness, so you have to be on Instagram. You know, they have these rules and the demographics on Instagram, you have to do this. So the demographics on LinkedIn, it has to be you. And while all that is great, Chris, and, and yes, it's great to look at the industry stats and where people are and all that thing, what really works for business owners is when you lean into the platform that you feel comfortable on. Mm. So if it's Facebook, then lean into that. Don't worry about Instagram. If it's Instagram, same. If it's LinkedIn, same. If I was to say to you, oh, Chris, you have to be on LinkedIn, but you don't like it, you don't enjoy it, you don't, you know, you put, put comment, which is where, where I'm at and you're laughing, it's probably you as well. I'm like, oh, LinkedIn, no, back to Facebook, back to Instagram. <laughs> you know, just spending time on the platform that you want to spend time on will give you success because there are customers and clients to be found on every Everyone, platform. Yeah. Everywhere there's people, there's millions of people, you know? So um, picking one platform, right? Picking one platform and excelling at it. And then using other secondary platforms. So what I mean by that is, oftentimes I meet people and say, oh, well, you know, I'm going Facebook Live today and then I'm gonna create a reel tomorrow. And then I'm, I'm writing an article on LinkedIn and I'm writing, and, and this is great, but they're doing all new pieces of content each day for each platform. So they're exhausted and they're burnt out. And um, so what we do is we put what, what I call my content circle. So I put that in place and what that means is, we create one, what I call a meaty piece of um, content. So like a, a good piece of content, your core piece of content for the week goes mm -hmm. out on your favorite platform. And whether it's a Facebook Live, whether it's an Instagram Live, whether it's an article on LinkedIn, whether it's a blog post on your website, whatever it is, it's your big main piece of content. And then everything else for the week feeds from it. You know, so if it was a Facebook Live, for instance, like it's downloaded and uploaded into your um, YouTube channel with the subtitles on it. You know, you pull the best quotes out of it and you put them as image quotes on Instagram. You, you pull the content, you know, you get it transcribed by your VA and they, they write and um, tidy it up a bit and it's an article on LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. But my point is for us as entrepreneurs and business owners and authors that we're so busy that, yes, we have to show up. Yes, we have to show our faces so people get to know, like, and trust us, but we don't have to do all that background work. If, if, if a business owner can create one good video a week, their VA or their assistant or their team can pull from that and create a whole week's of content. And that's where the gold is for business owners yeah. and for authors to get out there. Does that make sense? Yeah. That's how we like, kind of create the that. most effective use of wow. your time. Yes. And yeah. um, what happens is um, we, everybody thinks, right, I need to get visible on Instagram. So I'm going to show up every day and I'm going to, you know, create all this content. You're just exhausted, you know? And so it's finding systems and processes that work within uh, your business and work for you. And everybody thinks as well that um, to be consistent, which is a huge thing on, on any platform being consistent, to be consistent, we have to post every day. But that's not true either. You know, it's being consistent means showing up with a consistent message showing up in a consistent manner so for instance my um my daughters absolutely love um some youtubers right one one is a, a girl from america and she does crafts and stuff now she my daughter knows that her one youtube video a week comes out on a friday she knows the time she's waiting there she's on her laptop ready to go to watch this one video that girl doesn't have to show up every single day on youtube she shows up once a week at her given time consistency do yeah. you get me 
Yeah. So that's where people get confused. So being consistent, being yourself, like not trying to show up as someone you're not because you get found out for a start and it's boring you know it's boring show show the messes and show be the be vulnerable and you know no one wants fucking perfect yeah. you know we're sick of that <laughs> no it's, it's interesting because um back in around 2018 i or maybe end of 2017 i started committing to like daily facebook lives and yeah. um doing that in a vulnerable perspective and like just trying to be real like that actually probably was the thing that grew my connections on Facebook the most. And that's probably even how you sort of found me as well through other people. Um, And it wasn't like that content was necessarily good. It was just real. It was, you know, talking about real things in a real, you know, real manner and just showing myself as an authentic person who was vulnerable, who was, you know, true. Um, And so, yeah, like highly recommend that and like, absolutely it's it's extremely impactful yeah a hundred percent and what really works um chris if any any of your listeners wanted to follow that route because it, it's a brilliant route to follow like daily lives and um, i'm working one on, on one at the moment because it's been a while since i've done that so i'm doing i'm doing every weekday in july and they're just my little business tips and i might i might talk for a minute or i might talk for five minutes but what what helps the business owner so i've said you don't have to post every day and that is true but something like that what you're talking about really does work but what helps is to create the content plan to create the list okay brain dump on the sheet what's my book about you know what problem does it solve yeah. what diff- what's what's each chapter about each chapter can be broken into little bits you know what's the key point on this page even can be mm. broken down into a little facebook live and when we document that and create this big long list that means then we wake up on a Monday morning. Oh, I have to go live. Okay, look at my list. Today's live is about this subject. You can, you can rattle it off in two minutes on your Facebook, three minutes, five minutes, whatever you want. And it's done and it's out of the way. And I also like to go live in the morning because I, I've got it done then, you know, and then the rest of the day goes whatever. And it always gives me a little sense of accomplishment when I've gone live yeah. too. Yeah. Does it with you? you like that? Yeah. That's yeah. done. And- I found I found that like my American audience is typically more active when it's my morning as well. So it yeah. just works out really well. Yeah. Um, and yeah. just to expand on the topic stuff as well, I think, you know, authors, you have you have a book. You can even like look at specific things in the book and expand on them that you didn't necessarily do inside the book. And that's like that's content gold right there. Like anyone who's a fan of your stuff is going to eat that up. Like they'll love that. Absolutely. Absolutely. And the backstories, I mean, every, Mm -hmm. and any of the stories that you tell in the book, the backstories of them delving deeper in, even reading out a chapter or reading a snippet from a chapter live is amazing for authors. And I worked with a, with an artist in, in LA and she, what we got her doing was literally drawing and painting live on Facebook. And she would do it for hours, Chris. And she was working in a nine to five at the time. And she started to do that. And her her followers grew. People were asking for commissions. People are just so interested, you yeah. know. So for an author to read snippets from the book or to absolute gold, absolute gold. Yeah. Okay. So now that I've got like my weekly cadence, I know where I'm publishing. I know how often I'm publishing, being consistent with my message, myself, and all of that what do I like, what comes next? Like you you mentioned becoming the go-to, is that, is that just an automatic thing that happens or like what else is involved? Well, you need credibility, which is a huge thing. So it's great to show your expertise. So it's great to stand up there and on your platform, whatever platform it is and show your expertise. So, you know, deliver value, put out, you know, put out tips and tricks and all of that kind of stuff. So that people know that you're an expert. And um, but the other th- thing that you need is credibility. So credibility comes down to social proof and mm-hmm. um, finding ways, finding novel way, novel, excuse the pun, finding novel ways <laughs> of getting people to post about your book. So if you're posting out a physical book to people, how can you get that person to take a photograph and post it on their Instagram, post it on their Facebook? Could you give, you know, a monthly giveaway? Could you say, you know, every month we're giving away this hamper or this iPad or whatever, um, or, or a coaching session, you know, if you're, if you're a coach. Um, so everyone who posts their link or who, who tags me in their post with their photo with a book goes into the draw for the month to get such and such. 
So that is proof of concept. So that means then we're sheep, Chris, uh, you know, humans, we're sheep. So when I see, oh, Chris Benetti just bought that book and he's reading, well, well, if he's reading it, I must be reading it because <laughs> I don't want him learning anything extra that I don't know, <laughs> you know? Um, and you know this, you, you see this yourself. It's like somebody checks into your local restaurant and, and they're out for the night and they show up a picture of themselves with a cocktail and suddenly you're like, that's it. We need to go out for dinner. I want to go there, you know? So social proof, credibility, you know, proof of concept, all of that kind of stuff really helps um, followers gravitate towards you. And if you can prove that people are physically buying your book um, and even, even going to the post office, you know, stand, I say this to my clients all the time, never post something at the post office without taking a selfie and putting it on your Instagram <laughs> stories, you know, because now what does that do? That's like, Oh, she's put someone bought the book, you know, and um, there's books going out, sitting in a warehouse surrounded by books, books are delivered photographs. Like content doesn't, uh, content, of course, valuable content is good, but it doesn't always have to be, you know, this big, huge, valuable piece, you know, a quick selfie of you and your coffee as you're running into the office, is visibility, you know? Yeah. If, if every single piece of content you put out was, was a selfie of you and your coffee, well then no, you know? But it, it's finding that balance. And it's also showing what we talked about earlier, that vulnerability and showing your personal life. So for me, a big part of my story is that I am a mommy and I have got three kids. So while previously I used to nearly try to hide it in my corporate world, I used to work in a big corporate um, I was marketing design manager for a global corporate company. And I used to, uh, you know, nearly hide the fact that I was a mommy. You know, it's like, oh, it was nearly seen as a, you know, a bad thing nearly in corporate land. You know, oh, mm. she's a career woman. What do you mean you have kids type of a thing, you know? Uh, but as an entrepreneur, and, and I know that it makes people resonate with me. You know, people go, oh, yeah, you know, if she's a mommy and she can do it. You know, that I can do it too, you know? And, and we inspire so many people that we haven't even met yet, you know? Yeah. And your business owners, your authors that are listening to this will be the same, you know? And another thing that I, that I sorry, I, I'm probably going on a bit, but another thing that I really like to think when, when you're struggling with your mindset of what happens to us is we think, well, who's going to care? You know, if I post this, who's going to care? But it's like, people can learn from you and learn from your experiences and be inspired by you. And if you have something that can help someone, I firmly believe it's your duty to show up and help them, you know, and um, whether it's a piece, free piece of content or whether it's selling the book. And I say this to business coaches all the time. It's like, it's your duty to sell your program. If it's going to help someone, you know, my coach said that to me years ago and it made, made me go, ah, you know, it is Selling's not a bad thing. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and I think a lot of authors, I mean, I know a lot of your, your authors are business owners as well. So they have the two prongs, but um, I found with authors I've worked with in the past that um, they kind of missed that bit a bit. They're like, what do you mean I have to sell? You know, <laughs> here's my book and it's brilliant. It's like, well, yeah, but there are thousands, millions of books. So it's up to us to build a personal brand around what we're doing. And there's no better, more effective or cheaper way to do it than social media and to actually show our faces, you know? So we know that personal brands are obviously important, but you know, how do we compete with some of the bigger corporate brands? Like, you know, obviously we're going to get outspent or, you know, we're going to get out marketed by <laughs> some of the bigger players <laughs> in the space. How do you stand up as a personal brand? I love that. Well, basically um, what we have, Chris, is our personality. We have, the personal touch so the bigger brands they don't have that you know they're big corporates there's no one person that is the front of that brand and if there is you're not getting in touch with them or chatting with them online or they're not answering your dms you know so for us as business owners when we can be personal when we can answer dms when we can you know show up on live video and you know delivering our message as ourselves authentically people get to know, like, and trust us much more. And people want to buy locally, want to buy from the, the more personable person. They're like, oh, I, you know, I, I remember Denise, she's, you know, she plays football, she does her sea swims, you know, I like her, I'm going to buy from her. Instead of buying from the big brand, brand in the city or, or going to the big marketing company. But a mistake that a lot of um, business owners make is they kind of forget that we are small business owners, you know, and we have to mm. watch every penny with our ad spends and all of that kind of stuff. Whereas bigger brands, you know, look at your McDonald's, your Kit Kat, you know, your, those big brands, Marvel, all that kind of stuff. 
they have very different reasons for advertising than we do. We, every advertisement we do, and by advertisement, I mean whether it's paid or whether it's a post, whether it's a live video, whatever it is, every little piece of content we put out there should be to make a sale, you know, because sales are what gives our business life. Whereas big brands have so many other reasons to advertise. advertise. So um, they've got to keep their shareholders happy, you know? So, so oftentimes they're only advertising. So their shareholders go, oh, there, yeah, there's, there's the, there's the business I invested. Yeah, yeah, I'm happy now, you know? They put ads in, in newspapers and, and magazines just to keep the shareholders happy. And then there's a lot of it, other stuff then comes down to ego. Well, your man is advertising. Well, I'm going to go bigger, you know? And it's like, we want to be the biggest brand, you know? So this brand advertising that people get a bit, oh, we have to build a brand. But for us small business owners, we are the brand, you know, our face is the brand. And oftentimes I meet business owners and they're like, oh, I can, you know, I can't figure out what color to do my logo. Should it be pink or should it be blue or should it be this? I'm like, just get out there, you know, just get on Instagram or Facebook, show your face. The brand will evolve, the colors will evolve. And at the end of the day, it's not 20 years ago. 20 years ago, it mattered. Your logo mattered because that was the business logo and people remembered it. Right back then, people had to see your logo nine times for them to remember it. Now we're up at like 48 times or something <laughs> for somebody to recognize a static image. You know, They want you, they want authenticity. And that's what we as small business owners have to differentiate ourselves from those bigger guys. You know. Um, so that would be it for me and just and not watching what the big guys are doing. Just staying in your lane, you know, doing your thing, be authentic, be confident. And if you don't feel confident, just push yourself yeah. to be confident, you know, stop second guessing yourself and just lean into your expertise and yeah. show up. <laughs> yeah. So I have this um, really good, like check in with my mentor um, and we call them reps. Um, basically, you know, you wouldn't expect to get big, um, by going to the gym just once, you know, it's the consistency of showing up. It's the consistency of doing the work to yeah. get the outcome. And, you know, one thing that I love that he says is you can't control the outputs. You can only control the inputs. And so like, we can't necessarily say, I'm definitely going to have a sales call this week, or I'm definitely going to have a sale this week, but you can definitely show up and do a video on Facebook and you can repurpose that across multiple places because that's an input. That's something you can control. That's a variable you can control. And I guarantee you by doing all of the work that you know we've spoken about here today, that you'll be and have a much stronger personal brand by doing these inputs now and consistently than you would if you didn't do them, right? So <laughs> it's all about the input and the work that you do and you will see the outcome. Like I guarantee you'll see the outcome but it won't come without you doing the, in, the inputs first. That's exactly it. And the other thing to remember that is if you were to consider doing a live video like that we both like to do, um, at the start, you're not going to have a load of eyes on your live video. So it takes a while to build that up. So that's not a bad thing because you're learning your craft. You're getting used to doing your video. You're getting used. So it gives you that chance. I mean, if you looked back at some of my first live videos <laughs> and I thought for a while, I, I used to think, oh, I should get rid of them. I don't. I even have on my YouTube channel, I even have some old videos that I was doing a hundred day challenge and I'm doing a video every day. There's one of me face painted like a unicorn on there. And I'm like, <laughs> you know what? It's staying. Because now if you look at it and you, you look back, it's like, oh, you can see my journey, you know, and yeah. there's something nice in that, you know, nobody's perfect. And we don't well, want her. My, even my accent actually changed from from when I first started, even in 2017. My, like my voice and the way I speak has changed dramatically in just a few years. Yeah, me too. I remember when I was at FHL, I think it was 2018, um, which was my first FHL. And I was doing a video um, from the foyer of the, of the hotel. And somebody came on, somebody from Ireland came on and said, why are you speaking like an American? And I was like that am I? And, and I wasn't, but I, I, but I was speaking, when I looked back in the video, I'd slowed down my speaking because, it, you know, here in Dublin and you have got slang and I've, I've got an accent, I have a strong Dublin accent. So when I go, when I'm on a, on a football pitch, for instance, <laughs> I speak a bit more, <laughs> you know? So when I'm on my video, I find I slow a bit down so that people yeah. can understand me, you know? And um, because our American audiences, as you know, will be like, 
what? And I think <laughs> for Irish and Australian, we've got a bit more, we, uh, we had this discussion at FHL, do you remember? Yeah. We know more, there's, there's a lot more words that cross over and there's a lot more slang that we get. And mm-hmm. um, whereas when we use that in America, they go, what? <laughs> we were both on uh, uh, Marley Jackson's, um, remember Marley Jacks did the, yeah. the, um, the different slang words, that was funny. Um, the different slang words from, from Canada. And she was like, what does that mean? She, you were doing your Australian ones and I was doing my Irish ones, it was funny. Yeah. I'll make sure I link that in the show notes as well for everyone if you want a good laugh. Um, but Denise, I'm going to wrap up the show here today. Is there anywhere where you would like to send people? Yes. Um, so I have a, a tiny mini course, which is free. Um, it's not going to take you any more than 10 minutes to go through. So it's five, five steps, five little tiny videos. But each video has a tip. And if you implement... Uh, what I give you in that little, that little tip, it will move your business forward 100%. And um, it's all the stuff that we're talking about. Yeah. So it's about building authority online and it's all actionable steps. So it's, it's absolute gold. So I'll give you that link. If you can you can share that with your followers. A little gift from Denise Inspired in <laughs> Ireland. And it's not very sunny. And I'm sure you guys are all lovely and sunny in Australia. <laughs> I'm definitely inspired after today's episode. Thank you so much for the time today. And it's been an absolute pleasure. You're welcome. And thank you so much. And thanks for being here. I mean, when Chris Benetti asked you to come on your podcast, you're going to come, right? (laughs) Even if you are on the other side of the world. I'm glad we could make the time zones work. So um, I'm definitely coming to visit. I'll be be there in January, February. I'll see you. (laughs) Can't wait. (laughs) Damn, what an awesome episode. If you enjoyed it, please consider subscribing on your podcast platform of choice so you get notified every single time a new episode releases. And if you're struggling with your book sales, head over to smartauthormedia.com forward slash audit to get a free audit of your book sales to see where we can help you bridge the gap between not many sales to a lot of sales. (laughs) It's a free resource call that we have together where I give you some clear action steps that you can take to take your stuff from broken to selling. I'll see you over there. Thanks again for listening.